Okay, good morning. Getting myself all sorted out here. Let me know if you can see and hear everything okay. Good morning, Louise. How's things in New Zealand this morning? I think everything is a bit strange in this world of ours at the moment. I think everybody's feeling a bit stressed out and full on and oh good, I'm pleased. Now I have been mucking around with these settings. <laughs> I've learnt so much this last week on uh, using OBS and YouTube Live. So hopefully it's a little bit clearer than it has been. It's never going to be as good as the tutorials that I do on Patreon because this is a webcam versus my DSLR. And webcams are really made more for faces than they are for drawing. Um, but I have been mucking around the settings and hopefully it's a little bit clearer. I'm so proud, super fancy, have the picture of their reference up in the corner now too. I mean, things are looking up, right? <laughs> so anyway, I hope it's still um, large enough for you to see what I'm doing, which I think it should be. Uh, it's not quite as zoomed in because the more you zoom in, the more um, sort of fuzzy it gets, I guess. So that's good to hear. I'm very pleased. Hi, Nicola. That's good. Excellent. So you'll get there eventually. I don't know if you can hear. I've got everything shut up in the house uh, because the birds are being crazy outside. It's um, looking to be a beautiful day out and I think everybody's just very excited. But you should be able to hear the coel in the background <laughs> because I think that that, that sound pierces um, steel. It's a, it's really full on sound. Anyway, are you excited? I'm excited to get going on this uh, little girl. Every time I, I have her hanging on the wall waiting for Wednesdays and I'm like, oh, I'm itching to get to her and, and do some more. So what we shall do today and what will I do with my... bit of tracing paper. Um, so we worked on this part last week. I think what we need to do is strengthen that up a little bit. So add some shadows in there, get a little bit more depth happening and we'll move down around the side of the face here. I'm hoping that we sort of get to finish off this area today. I don't know. We'll see how we go. Um, things can go pretty slow I suppose but I, I hope that you kind of enjoy that process too. I do. I really enjoy um, spending time and giving myself the opportunity to to take time to really observe um, my subject, my reference. So I think we should just dive in. So a couple of things I want to do first is um, I think that we put down a layer of light of warm gray one. I'm going to put another layer down on top there here. Uh, and then I want to start to bring in a little bit more of the darks into this, um, these sort of very light face feathers. Now the more darks you add, the more um, depth that you're going to see and the more that that pumps up the light. So it's important to make sure you've got a good amount of um, darkness happening. Um, it will make it look more realistic, it will make it come off the page more, it'll just give more depth. Uh, overall. Good morning Katrina, how are you going? Um, yeah, so I think we'll just dive in. I, I, I'm itching to get started so let's just give this a go. Uh, I'm going to take, I think I'm going to take Walnut Brown if I can find it here. Walnut Brown first and I want to strengthen up some of these darkness parts between these little face feathers here. And remember that what you see on your reference is um, lighter, I guess. It, it lacks a lot of context uh, because it's flat, it's 2D. 
and if you're looking at it on a screen like I am too it's backlit as well so things appear a lot lighter um, on initial inspection than they actually are I've got my pieces of paper here to scribble on to show you bits and pieces so yes um, the darks will always be the thing that makes uh, your work stand out so don't be afraid of the darks <laughs> don't be afraid of the darks um, you can keep, it's something that you can keep pushing because you just add more context around it you know you'll add more colors and you hear the coel <laughs> he gets going like this it sounds like he's going to explode He has been quiet on and off, so clearly he's found a couple of mates. Um, but he's giving it a good old try to get some more eggs hidden in other baskets, as it were. So I haven't done much already, but you had your first snow. I am so jealous. I, I It's starting to, to warm up a little bit here. Um, as in, you know, like getting closer to 30 and I already don't like it. <laughs> it's going to get so much worse. But yes, I'm very jealous of you having your first snow there. Uh, yeah, so I haven't added a lot already, but already you can see that it's starting to bring these lights out. Um, and I'm not working hard. It's um, light strokes. This is a really nice ready warm brown uh, so it's good for these sorts of warmish animal bird tones I do like this colour. Um, <laughs> it just sounds like he's going to explode, doesn't he? Um, so there, I think I told you last week that they're a cuckoo, a koala, and they come all the way down from Papua and Indonesia just to mate and lay their eggs in currawong and um, wattle bird nests. So, yeah, they're called um, a brood parasite, which is not a very nice word, but it's also not very nice what they do, I guess. So, I'm just going around just lightly some of these lighter feathers that we put in last week. We've got a couple more layers to go here on this. What, what I do is I'm sort of judging as I go along how much darker I want to do things because what you're looking at now is um, there's less transition, there's, there's more darkness, um, there's some light but there's not a lot, a lot of middle tones so we've got to add some more of those in yet but I want to get some of these darks down and then once we um, add the mid tones then you'll start to see that you need to add some more darks and it's just a process that goes around and around. Um, I'm actually thinking I might try a little bit of yellow I've got dark Naples ochre here, but any sort of um, like ochre type yellow. And I think it will brighten up, yeah. The oranges that we've already put down. Now I'm not taking this all the way to the, the top of the sort of white tips of the feathery bit here. I'm leaving a little bit of that. And we can come in with a bit of white pencil as well um, just to help blend it all together but also keep that area much lighter I think that that is helping I hope that you can see everything okay let me know if um, you, I need to adjust anything I have um, on my computer screen next to me I've got the YouTube live page which has got the chat on the side so I can see that and then I've got my little OBS so I've got two images and they're both not very large so I can't really see whether you are able to see 
well. Let's just take a little bit of white and I've got um, I've got polychromos white here. It's good, but I actually quite like the waxy pencil whites instead. I think that they're a little bit brighter. Um, so polychromos is oil based and wax based ones are Prismacolor and Luminance. And we'll just see how this one goes and might add a little bit of Prismacolor. I think that even if you stick to polychromos pencils, if that's the one that you want to stick to, I, I think that's a really good choice um, because they are artist grade uh, and they're relatively inexpensive compared to a lot of other brands like Luminance and Pablo's and Lightfast. Um, but I think it's always worthwhile getting just a couple of, I've got one in here, the Prismacolor whites as well. Um, and they're even oops, more cost effective, so that's Prismacolor here. Um, and you can just buy them individually, so you can get a couple of those to have in your stock. Um, I find them quite useful. So. Okay, I'm going to take a bit of the Burnt Ochre, which is that orangey colour. And come in again, and can you see that the um, walnut brown that I put down before has almost disappeared really like it, it's not a strong color anymore it's um the mid-tones have now come and sort of pushed it right back so that that's where you'll see that need that put for push and pull of darks and lights okay I think that that's coming together nicely now it's starting to look more like those sorts of ruffles that I was after I'll add a bit more of the burnt ochre in over here too and I think we will add a bit of that yellow as well that really helped brighten things up A really lovely day actually it might actually get a bit warm but I think what I'm gonna do after we finish scrolling together is go for a walk um, now I'm gonna have to change the day that we do this get together to my Friday or your Thursday because my day away from my muggle job is changing next week so hopefully that still works for you all it'll be the same sort of time um, I have some warm grey, warm grey six. Um, yeah, I'm very excited. I, I'm getting to, well, I'm working towards um, becoming a full-time artist. So I'm hoping that will happen over the next sort of six months or so. But in the interim, I'm kind of cut down my days at my work slowly. So um, after December, I'm going to cut down just two and a half days and we'll see how I go from there. So in preparation for that, I've got to move all my staff around and that means me changing my day at home because I actually do some work from home as well after this um, from Wednesday to Friday. Just adding in a few of those more dark areas again. It doesn't have to be like you don't have to do all the same color all the way through. You want to keep looking at your reference and and keep making you know artistic judgments as to where you think a little bit more dark would be really beneficial. Just adore these little face feathers. Okay, I think that's working all right. So you see these, these um, 
little flecks of quite dark colour in between. And I'm just looking at my reference and getting an idea of where some of the darks and some of the lights are. If, um, if while you're working on something you can't see the tones, I, think I mentioned last week that it's really the tones that make things look realistic. It's not the colours, it's the tones, so the interplay of light and dark. If you find it difficult to find your tones, squint a little um, and that makes your reference blurry. And then you can uh, distinguish those sorts of darks and lights a little bit easier. So I've got the yellow ochre again. Oh, doesn't that brighten it up nice? Yeah. I'm going to take I'm going to take ivory actually and run that over this part here where there is some lighter feathers as well but I also want to blend all of that sort of together What do you think? I think that looks much better. Oh, thank you, Nicola. I'm, I'm really excited about um, about leaving work, <laughs> but also this this phase too. I mean, I um, when I was a teenager, I wanted to become an artist, and then um, life kind of gets in the way, and I was academically minded as well, so. Um, I was kind of very encouraged. I'm just trying to find my dark sepia, which is hiding somewhere, um, to pursue an academic career, which I did. Oh, my dark sepia has disappeared. Um, and so it was really only six years ago, oh, six years ago, four years ago, that I came back to doing art again. And my goodness, it's just, it's like a coming home. It really is. That dark sepia has disappeared. Um, and, and it's over the last 12 months particularly that I have decided that that's really what I want to pursue. And, and that has come about from a couple of different reasons. One that um, I'm 46 now and I've worked very hard my whole life for other people and I think I'd like to do that for myself now. So I finally found my dark sepia, um, or a dark sepia. Um, and also I, I can't even begin to properly express how much joy I get from creating art and also from sharing it. Like, oh, I just love uh, sharing other artists' work and supporting other artists and creating community. And it's a, you know, a profound opportunity. I think it's... Um, something I very much enjoy so yeah I'm really looking forward to taking that further I feel like I've finally come home in a way so but you know practical matters mean that I've got to continue on with my other job for a while yet and I'm proud of the work I've done there um, but I think it's time for me to move on from that career and uh, find my own bliss have some joy listen to the coel start um yeah, my sepia is with eagle. Do you know how many dark sepias I have? <laughs> I have there uh, multiple copies, uh, at least half a dozen of dark sepia and all of the greys, and I have them all over the place. Um, but yes, I have no doubt that in my mug for mug of pencils, so I keep a mug of pencils. I don't know if I showed you this last week for each project, um, and I do have a mug of pencils for my. Harris Hawk over uh, on my easel, so there, there definitely will be a dark sepia in there. Um, 
all right I'm just sitting back a little bit and looking at the darkness if I like that that looks good I think all right let's bring a little bit more darkness into the what we look at as white face feathers and there is that mix of um, cold and warm greys that we sort of looked at last week and I'm just trying to decide how dark we go to start off with so I've got warm grey, uh, sorry, cold grey, cold grey 4 and I'm looking at where the shadowy details are on the reference and that there's this sort of crisscrossy motion to these feathers um, so I'm, go I'm doing strokes in two directions just to get a bit of a feel for that And I know we look at that and see that as white, but it really is quite um, quite a lot of darkness in there. And there's a little bit of pink in here too, which I want to bring in. It's working very lightly, building up the layers. always working in the direction of the feathers or the fur so you can see the shadowy area here under the eyes are actually a lot darker now we've added darks up here it starts to really show where else you need to add darkness Warm grey one again. I just want to make sure that I've got a good layering of that down. Oh, Coel's moved on. It's very quiet out there. It usually only gets this quiet when the sparrowhawk comes in, so that may be the case. Nice base layer down there. Now the face feathers on this side here are really quite light, so instead of using um, warm grey one, I'm going to differentiate that by using white as the base layer and then we'll bring some warm and cold greys in over the top of it so it's working some light in as a base there some really nice dark feathers under here they're going to be fun to do So I'm going to go with it, nice and sharp, and I'm going to add some of those lines, those crisscross lines in here, which just give all this extra depth, dimension to what's going on there. And if you've got a nice light base layer, when you do things like this, there's still that, that lightness showing through, which helps um, give that, that sense of uh, three dimensions, of there being things that sit forward and into the light, and a depth of shadow behind as well. So you don't need to press hard. It's quite 
clear of the darkness down in here. And I'll add some walnut brown in there as well. I can see that it's quite a warm dark. So it's just a matter of working piece by piece and adding those shadows in, adding the mid-tones, keeping the lights light. I'm going to start to bring some of the shadow on the outside of these face feathers here in. And if you work lightly, if you need to, you can pull colour up as well. So always try and work lightly in layers. I'm actually seeing like a little bit of a greeny colour in there and I was thinking about using a um, umber but I did pull out an olive green which is a yellowy green I think I'm going to add just a really light layer of that in here just a little bit on this side here I see a little bit in here, but we'll come back and do this area a bit. And then I also see a little bit of it down here. Um, and all of that comes from just getting to know your pencils. And the only way that you get to know your pencils is by lots of practice. So don't, um, don't feel like you should be able to see all different colors straight away. It comes with experimenting. Um, and it comes with increasing your observational skills as well. So the more you look at something, I think that holds true for anything. The more that you look at something, the more enticing and chanting, incredible it is, and the more you see. So um, that comes back to what I was saying about giving yourself time. You give yourself time. Give yourself some grace and some time to sit with your subject and really get to know it, really focus in. I've got walnut brown again um, and it needs a bit of a sharpen so I'm going to do some of these areas that don't require a lot of fine lines first And I'm going to give it a little sharpen. So I use, um, this is my primary sharpener, if I can get it under here. Right, this is a Derwent Super Point. It's a manual sharpener, um, a crank sharpener. So pencil goes in here. I need two hands to operate it though. And um, you crank. And that gives these really amazing, 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 I managed to put stuff all over, um, long sharp points. But I don't want to keep sharpening and pulling back lead all the time. Um, so I have two options that I use after the, the tip of my point has worn down. One is a piece of sandpaper block. And I will just run my lead over the top of that backwards and forwards, turning it all the time until I get a sharper point again. And then when that stops working, because it's getting down lower, like this one is now, um, I will use another sharpener. So this one's just a Faber-Castell. It has um, the three holes for the three different size pencils that they make. And I'll just very lightly run it through one of the holes. I'm not actually sharpening any of the wood off, just enough to get another sharpness again. So there's ways of um, preserving your pencil um, for as long as you can and making good use of of the color in there because I do feel like well I do get a bit frustrated sometimes when it you seem to be um, pulling off a lot of the color as well as the wood around the outside of a pencil um, so yeah just 
pick up little tips and tricks along the way and try things out for yourself. I'm just adding some of these warmer crisscrossy crossy lines. And I want there to be a softness to our little owl as well. So now as, I, um, as we get darks in in different spots you can start to see other areas that need attention. So this little pink rim around the eyes too light so I just want to add a like a wash a very light layer of the walnut brown over the top and these areas in here need a lot more darkening so we'll bring in some more sepia as well dark sepia everything has dark sepia in it I tell you it's a perfect color And then this is looking really too yellow, so I want to bring some orange in there as well. Um, that beige, light beige, a uh, beige red, beige red. And I want to use it as a glaze too. It's quite a pinky hue through here. you think? Is it looking like an owl? Looking like it's making sense? Um, I'm going to knock that yellow back a little bit. I've got burnt ochre and I'm just going to come in over the top of that a little. I want it to be bright still but I don't want it to be quite that bright. Yeah that's better I think. And I'm going to bring a bit more of that in here as well. glass you can hear in the background excellent all right let's work on these feathers here a little bit uh, I think I'm going to keep the burnt orange but I do need to sharpen that up a bit oh yeah that's just part of the learning process though Louise and you know how exciting as an eraser <laughs> I think it's brilliant that you can take little bits up but also don't forget that you are um, going to be adding darks in as well so don't um, don't pull up too much because it, it may well work in your favor um, as far as being heavy handed that uh, that is just a learning process as well it really is but my, my best advice for you is to try and pull your hand away from the very tip of your pencil doing that automatically makes how you press it onto the paper differently um, but yeah and and to do practice um, I think we talked about that last week to do practices so like this is light this is medium down and I have to move down to do hard um, because you can build up this with with just continual light pressure in layers and it really is just a learning process so don't don't feel um, don't be too hard on yourself because you're doing beautiful work um, and 
yeah, the more you practice, the more that you'll learn about your own techniques as well, because we all do things differently too. And Nicola, I don't, I have to work flat when, well, I'm, I tend to work flat when I'm recording a tutorial because that works best for my camera. Um, but otherwise I do prefer to work at an angle. So I have a, a desk easel and I have a standing easel. So my bigger works I'll put on a um, standing easel. Uh, and the smaller ones I can sit on the tail on the on a desk easel. For this one, I'm actually cheating a little bit. I'm, I don't think I can show you here, but I was trying to get something with a little bit of an angle. <laughs> this is, and it looks terrible. It's been used for opening jars, but it's a folder, <laughs> a binder folder, um, and a piece of non-slip mat that I've got. So I've got a little angle of probably maybe 15 degrees or so, um, which is just enough to stop my hand feeling like I'm working really flat so it doesn't have to have anything fancy um, as this is a, a ring binder like a um, yeah a ring binder a folder that you put papers in so it has that little bit of an angle and I've just got a little bit of non-slip mat on it so that it stops my drawing board from moving and now I've got a bit of an angle um, there's a good reason for using an angle too rather than having things flat uh, we are helped out a little bit by having an outline here because things are already in perspective for you then. But if you are looking at a, a flat plane, um, the end is further away from your eyesight than this, this end, like this further away than here. So you have the ability or the possibility to skew things directionally and which will make you know your, your drawing longer. So the more you can bring it up to the plane of your eyesight, uh, the more front on it is, the more likely that you'll get things in perspective correctly. So, but aside from all that, it's actually better for your wrist. And like this, you are the most important tool in your toolbox. So you've got to try and and care for your um, your beautiful self as well. So, um, yeah, do all those sort of things. You want to make sure you do lots of hand stretches and stuff as well. Um, even if you don't grip a pencil hard. Over time, you know, you've got this move, this motion that you've got a hold of something, and you need to be able to relax those muscles out. I do have a post on my Patreon about hand exercises. Um, I'm pretty sure it's public. I'll have a look, but if not, I'll share it with you um, because it's super important. You could look after yourself. Um, right here. So let's do a little bit of this burnt ochre in these feathers on the side here this is much lighter area here so the darks aren't going to be anywhere near as dark as up here little bits of orange and more of like a um, we're going much more warmer greys down here, so maybe like a warm grey three or so will be a good option, I think. And I could have pulled up a little bit of the grey that I've done as the outline there, probably. But um, I really feel like it's going to blend in and I'm going to add some greys in there as well. Oh good, it is public, so that's good. Was it helpful, Katarina, do you think? Like, was it um, useful information? I have to remind myself to do my stretches as well, but I certainly notice if I go for too long without it. Um, and it takes a couple of minutes. I know we tend to not see as important um, things that actually are good for our bodies. <laughs> we tend to push through. Like going for a walk is good for my body and I don't do that enough um, but you know if you want to continue doing your artwork well into your till your um, late life you need to make sure that you are able to look after your hand your hands your necks your shoulders so working on an angle is really much better for your neck and your shoulders as well because our necks weren't designed to hold our very heavy heads over a flat area for long periods of time. Um, we need to add some. I've got my warm grey one again, and I realise I need to come out into this area. So 
put a layer of that one down. I'm not going all the way out there yet because I want to concentrate on these little feathers here. And I'm pretty sure I did do white all the way out there, but I'm just going to go over that as well. Uh, I think I'm going to take some ivory again. Yeah, the stretches are good, aren't they? Yeah, a wrist brace can be helpful, particularly when you are um, when you have an injury. I am, um, yeah, and I use my hands as in typing and using a mouse a lot at work as well, and my muggle job as well. And I really do find, particularly using a mouse. Um, I, I tend to get a bit sore in here and when that's really bad um, then yeah a brace does help but I think it's more about trying to build the strength around your hand up this is covered in cat hair so please excuse this but this is my exercise ball <laughs> and you can use a squash ball or whatever so a few times a day I'll just sit and I have one at work and one on my desk here and just squeeze it um, and I'll squeeze it in different ways and that all just helps build the muscles up in, in all of your, your um, muscles and ligaments and tendons and stuff all through your hand. Um, so I think that that's a really good thing to do as well. The other thing is that you can do is squeeze um, like a wet face cloth. Um, and that again, that helps build up the muscles in this area so just to sort of support that as well. Uh, so I've got some ivory here. I'll add a little bit of that in just in the shadowy sort of areas over the top of the orangey bits add a bit of depth in there and I want to put a little bit of ivory over the top of that long grey one that we put down here this is this pencil is getting a bit close to not being able to be used um, as it is and I will need to add a pencil extender to it which have you seen a pencil extender they're the most fabulous things ever this is a pencil extender here so this there's all different sorts that you can get but this one um, is actually dual end so for two different size pencils it's got a little collar that you pull off and then that's my wee pencil look at that that's a dark sepia that shows you how many dark sepias I use um, which means I can still continue using it probably until it gets about down to here um, and it slips on over tightens it up and then suddenly I've got like a full size pencil again magic magic I tell you um, so this one's going to need one soon too it's okay probably at the moment as soon as it stops being able to rest on my hand here is when it's going to get a bit problematic for me in any case and I have fairly large hands. Just looking at my reference all the time. And knowing that I'm working in subtleties, so layers and layers and layers. Uh, let's get a nice... Yeah, heavy lifting does make your hands, your wrists ache, for sure. Um, yeah, and in those sorts of cases, absolutely, I think a brace would be ideal. I um, hope you do look after yourself, though. Um, I have, and that includes your back and your neck and all those bits and pieces as well. Um, long grey two. We're pretty amazing creatures really at how resilient we are um, and that we tend to work through a lot and put our bodies under a lot of stress but I've certainly noticed um, and sometimes I forget that I'm 46 
uh, certainly noticed in the last couple of years that my body doesn't bounce back anywhere near as quickly as it used to 10 years ago. Disappointingly, <laughs> how dare that happen. Um, but by the same token, it also means that I am getting a bit more respect for my body as well and appreciating the way that it supports what I want to do. You know, like it's... Um, and it sounds funny talking about my body as though it's separate to everything else because it's not, obviously. Um, and perhaps that's the, the, the problem at the crux, huh? That maybe we think about our body as being separate. Oh, we're going to get into a whole philosophical debate there. I do love that. I did medieval philosophy as part of my... Well, I did two undergraduate degrees, a double degree, and one was medieval philosophy. Um, and I did like a good philosophical debate. Extending that up. This, I love this colour, one grey too, it's fantastic. It does need a bit of a sharpen though. These delicate little feathers. Sitting back and having a look, what do I need to do? I'm going to take dark sepia. And I'm going to do some very fine lines. In these darkest spots here. But I want to make sure that some of the lights also show through there. some of them up and in. It's only subtle but it really makes a big difference. How many warm grey twos do you have? Oh, uh, pretty much the same as the uh, the dark sepia. Dark sepia, all of, all of the greys but warm grey two, um, warm grey one, cold grey one. Well okay you're going to be horrified probably but this is my spare spare greys <laughs> so that that's all my gray my greys in waiting as it were so as the other ones start to wear down that's what i pull from so i those ones i tend to order in fours and fives i guess threes fours and fives the um the other greys i usually only get a couple at a time of i also have lots of spare of the um like the nougat the walnut brown Burnt ochre, ivory. I'm just looking at my spares. Um, because you know, you need to have them on hand. You've got to be prepared. <laughs> but it's also a convenience thing, too, because I often have multiple, well, I always have multiple projects on the go. So I need to have um, a way of keeping the pencils that I'm using on any particular project together. Um, and so to do that, because I, there's a you know this core set of colours that I use for pretty much everything, I need to have multiples of that, so that I can um, be efficient. I'm all about efficiencies, you know. I have to do a lot of that in my managerial role, so um, yeah, I tend to carry that forward <laughs> in my projects at home as well. Um, Hmm, I think I'm going to go with, am I going to go with raw umber, or am I going to go, um, so my, my spare piece of paper, I'm just having a look at what colour I think I want, 
um, yeah, I'm going to go with raw umber. And I'm going to pull up a little bit of shadow coming up and away. So we've got the shadow on the, the whiter face feathers coming that way. And then we've got a shadow coming up and out. Which will add a little bit more grey too. But I want to bring some of this um, greeny, yellowy brown in as well. Yes, you do. Need, I think it's very sensible, very wise to have backups for the backups. <laughs> My mum and dad were scout leaders, um, scouts and cubs. And I never was. I didn't have anything really to do with all that. But I do take being prepared very seriously when it comes to art. <laughs> art um, and refried beans. I always have plenty of cans of refried beans um, and tortillas. And ice. I like to have, drink my water with ice in it, so I always have heaps of ice as well. We all have our little quirks, don't we? And rice, brown rice. I'm just thinking what's in my cupboard at the moment. These little face feathers are all coming together now. She's really adorable. I'm really enjoying her. Um, let's bring a little bit of this in here as well. There's some beautiful darks going on. So you'll see me do this sort of thing sometimes. And what I'm doing is I'm looking at my reference and I'm, I'm actually not looking at the paper at all. I'm using my reference and I'm tracing my mind's eye and using my hand in coordination to make sure that I'm looking at the right place for something in relation to somewhere else. So for this part of these feathers that are the darker sort of feathery area that's encroaching onto the light white feathers on the face here, I could see that it sweeps up and through this darker area with the walnut brown that I've got here up to the corner of the eye. So that's what I was doing there. Um, and if you see me doing that in different areas, it's really me measuring uh, one area against another in to get that sort of relationship and make sure that I'm, f I'm getting things in the right place, I guess. And I know I've got my lines down here, but as I said before, they're really just guidelines. Then you really do look at things differently when you're adding your your guidelines down compared to when you're actually rendering details in it's two very different um, parts of the process and you may think that you're putting the lines down in um, in ways that reference um, what's going on but I you know I've had so much so many instances where I've put lines either on the inside or the outside of an area but then done the opposite in another space. So if I was to just go off the lines and, and not really hone in on my reference, then there's the potential to actually get something quite out of whack and need to start again. So that's the importance of looking at your reference. Now I've come down here and we haven't actually got any base layer there, so I need to fix that up. Um, I'm really liking this raw umber. It's working really nicely in here, actually. But again, that's raw umber has that sort of greeny yellow. Um, I was trying to think which way will we go? Because we've still got more work to do up here, but we haven't started over here. We've got a bit more work to do in here. Um, are you guys happy to hang around a, a bit for for a bit longer yet? I'd like to do probably another half hour or so. I find like I feel like I'm just starting to get warmed up at the, at the hour mark. <laughs> so 
so I'll continue on if you guys are happy to hang around for a bit longer I think I'm going to add some uh, warm grey down there so that we can pull some of that out first I'm really loving that little bit of green in there. Excellent. Well, I say let's keep scribbling for a while then. I'm itching to get the darks in there. That's going to be fabulous. Okay, so a little bit of warm grey down there. I've got burnt ochre. I'll start adding the initial layers down here. I did have some spots down there, but I can't really see them anymore. So we'll go over them when I go over these spots again as well. So just a light initial orangey layer. Oh, good oh. Now the feathers in this part here are much lighter so I don't want to go too orangey in there. I'm going to take the Naples, Dark Naples Ochre again because that worked really nicely up here and just bring about a bit of that in. Just really lightly. Remember that we'll build up layers, so start lightly. what I was doing. Take my Tombow. And I'm not doing like a, a, a flat layer of each color on top of each other. I'm picking out bits and place, pieces. Um, so that we've got some interest. We've got different depths of color in different areas. I'm going to take a magical warm gray two again start to blend all that together and when I say blend it together it pushes the pigment into the paper surface a bit more so that it's not just sitting uh, on the surface which means that they then start to work together a little bit more um, but it also unifies it by putting this this tiny bit of um, gray color over the top of everything so it works like a glaze if you are familiar with doing that in painting. Okay, I'm looking 
looking at this spot here and I see that it's I've left quite a hard line there and I don't want that hard line there so I'm going to extend that out a little bit and I may actually use the eraser and lift a little bit of it up I'm just going to see how I go doing this way because it's not really that dark there but by the same token I'm going to darken up under here a bit so it may look less out of place as we start to add more layers down which is kind of what I was talking about Louise don't feel like you need to lift up too much until you've done more around it um, and you may find that you've got what you needed in there to start off with it just hadn't built up everything else around it yet Sitting back and looking and seeing what I need to do. Okay, I'm going to take ivory again. little feathers um, do we want burnt ochre again orange this up a little more quiet outside unusual for this time of the morning sometimes in the area where I live too and you can hear some lorikeets now um, in the area I live there's a couple of like sports fields too and this time of year they do tend to sow grass seed I don't know why they do but they do um, and they end up with great flocks <laughs> of gorillas and galahs on them so um, they tend to do the majority of that sort of feeding first thing in the morning um, and that's where you'll find them when I drive to work I see them munching away right yeah so try lifting it up a little bit with your pencil uh, with your with your pencil with your eraser um, then then try using um, some more darks around it do you have some scotch magic tape that's the other thing that you could try too so um, I don't know that I've shown you this and I'll, sh I'll just do it on a little bit of the face feather here so this is scotch magic tape it's um, it's the it's kind of like a matte tape but I think that it's a little different to the What's the word for it that you can get? The other tape, different brands. I, I feel like this one's a little different, so I think it's the Scotch brand that you've got to use. But you take a little piece off. Let's get rid of that end that I had turned over. And then just take the tackiness off by laying it on your hand for a second. So it's nowhere near as sticky now, but it has some tack. And then, and it, this is 
it's a process that I'm not 100% confident in myself yet. It's something I'm still learning, but I, it has some really great uses. I can see see the potential for it. So what I might do is is lighten up some of these areas here. Will I or will I do? No, I'm going to lighten these areas up here. So I'm just going to lay it over the top and run my pencil as though I'm sort of um, colouring in an area that I wanted it removed. Did you see how it took the pigment out? It just lifts it right up and away. And if I turn it over you can see the pigment. Well maybe you won't be able to on the webcam but um, you see how that really lightened up there? So then if you do that then you can come back in with your layers again so it might be worthwhile trying trying that too. You can pick it pick the um, Scotch Magic Tape up just at office supply stores here. Um, I can't imagine it would be too difficult to get anywhere else. If I can get it in Oz, you should be able to get it in New Zealand as well. So um, they, it does help um, when you've started to lay down too much too many darks, and you don't want to. Um, disrupt the paper too much by too much erasing or you already have erased over uh, they're all tools to work with together to use in different ways so you know for, for exposing more lightness underneath you have the option of the scotch tape you've got the eraser you've got the slice oops which is slice tool which is now hidden under here slice tool so there's all different things that you can do to bring back the lightness of um, underneath but thing to remember if using or using any of it really is that there needs to be something to go back to so different um, pencils have different staining properties um, so it's difficult to come back to the, the white or the light of the paper what's always a good idea is to do one of these sorts of base layers first like what I've done through here is use warm grey one or cold grey one or white even because then you've got a base to come back to if you want to pull um why have I got that pencil in my hand I don't even know why if you want to pull <laughs> back color you need to have something to pull it back to so rather than plain paper it's best to work with a base layer I hope that makes sense does that make sense Excellent, excellent. Um, what do I want to work on next? What do I want to get next? I'm going to pull a little bit more. Maybe that's why I was working ahead of myself. Um, I want to pull a little bit of these shadows in here. I've got cold grey one. I can see there's some coolness in here as well. And I had a little bit of that coolness in. At, oop, and I do want to get a like a cold grey, maybe three or something as well. Add a little bit of that in here. And um, you find out about all of these different tips and tricks by seriously, in all honestly, just watching a bunch of YouTube. <laughs> And following a bunch of artists because everybody has their their own ways to do things and um, you can learn a lot from I'm going to use my Tombow now you can learn a lot from the way that others do things and extrapolate that into a way that works best for you and it's always good to have multiple tools in your oh that's good um, in your, your toolbox so some things will work for you and some won't, you know. Um, I do find that the Tombow Mono is really good for softening areas. Um, I look at it more as like a softening tool. So I'm pulling the light sort of up. The light areas we've done up and it just gives it that bit of, that bit of softness. In spots. It, it, it's kind of like blending but with removal if that makes sense 
the thing that you do want to watch with any of these rubbery erasers is that you can get marks on the surface so you just want to run it on to a clear surface before you go to somewhere else that you don't want that pigment can you see the difference that made it might not be really visible on the webcam but it just softens the lighter color up and out and I do want to define this edge a little more too you got me using one erase tool and now um, that's what I'm focused on <laughs> Uh, which is, uh, no, that's a reason that I do a small area at a time because I want to drill down into that area and um, give it my full attention because if I go all over a piece and just keep coming back in, I feel like I lose direction. I find it, I personally find it harder to build up the layers if I'm looking at the piece as a whole. I'd much rather look at. Um, Oh yeah, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to look at a small area and work on that. I do have my Adduent electric razor. Do you know what? I haven't used it since I started doing these colored pencil um, wildlife sort of portraits. I used it a lot in graphite. Well, not a lot. I used it for graphite. Um, but yeah, look, I can see that that would have, um, that would be really good. I wonder where it is actually. We could try it. Um, so here, this is this is what um, Katarina was talking about. I missed you there. <laughs> yeah, look, stationery and art shops, man. We've got to keep them in business. That's you know we're doing our duty. Um, so this is the electric sharpener that Katarina was talking about. It's again, it's a little um, sharpener. I keep saying sharpener instead of eraser. It's another little rubbery eraser bit, but it's got this magic little hole on, uh, bit on the side, and it moves it around really quickly. So instead of you doing this, you would just touch that down. I've used it in charcoal work as well. You can actually slice it off so you get a really nice fine line. But let's have a little play and see. And you just really touch it down. Look at that. That's magic. Yeah, I think that it is can, you know, potentially be a bit of a scary tool, particularly because it's not really fine. Um So you could, you know, potentially take off a lot more than you had intended, but I can see it's I can see it's um it's worth oh no, you've started me on this now. It's going to be used. Do you know, I don't even know how long I've had this. It's got a battery in it. Obviously the battery is still fine. So, Well, there you go. Just excuse me while I play with my eraser. Yeah. Well, that one's staying in the toolbox again now too. What else have I got in this drawer that I might be able to use? So with the Tombow, just to show you too, there's two different sorts. I don't know if you've seen both. One's like a rectangle and one's like a um, more circular sort of tube round. I don't tend to use this one very much, but I have multiples of this one. And again, that was something that I used a lot. I do use a lot in my graphite work. Hmm, interesting. Um, that's exactly right Nicola you cannot have too many supplies I completely agree and that goes back to what we we're talking about before about being prepared you know you need to have backups for your backups so yeah <laughs> I don't think that the these are terribly expensive I don't know but um you, yeah you'll find all sorts of magical supplies to use um and if you are not sure of them, don't worry about using them on a piece that you're really working on. Make yourself like a cheat sheet. Do do layers of of pencil and um, just on a piece of scrap and give it a good go. Like we can let's do let's do 
So we've got a layer of dark sepia, it's working very lightly. And let's do a layer of hmm, Delft Blue. Oh, you know what I should have done first is actually put some light down first. Did not just say that a minute ago, and then I totally did the opposite. Well, let's do two. So I'll do light layer. Mind you, this is just a scrap piece of paper. This is not, you know, good paper. So how effective it's going to be, I don't really know. This is like just note, you know, a note block paper. And dark sepia. Blue. So you can see how the colour is a little different when you go over the top of a light base. It works a little differently. Um, darks particularly work differently. Um, but you can build up the colour so that they end up looking much the same anyway. Uh, but the difference is going to be, so I've got some burnt umber here. I just want to create something with a lot of dark layers. Okay, so we have. Oh, how many layers is that? Three. I might do one more. Um, I've got a cold grey five. So the other thing is with these sort of er erasing off areas you want to actually have enough layers down for it to be seen too. So you know if you've got some very light areas you're less likely to see what you're doing as far as erasing making a difference. So I've got my slice tool here so you can see that that works not too bad but the difference with having a light layer underneath is huge. Right, so that's a good reason to do light layer. And I've got my Tombow. Pretty good. Even better. So really light. Uh, scotch tape. off yeah about the same but again you're coming back to a, a um, surface that's already quite waxy like a resist underneath so I think it's all, it doesn't matter what tool you're going to use it's going to be be better anyway but this one didn't work too bad at all. I guess much the same as the erase there. And my newly discovered, thanks to Katarina, um, Derland Electric. Twelve circle. Yeah, much quicker. The colour comes up much quicker. Look at that, it's magic. So they're, yeah, they're all the different type of erasing tools that you, you have the potential to use. Um, and while I've got the slice tool, which again is actually quite readily available at one of our biggest office supply um, stores here, Officeworks, um, you can also use a, oh, like a X-Acto type knife too but these are so sharp I would be really worried about 
scratching my paper whereas this is a ceramic blade and you have to really have a good go to actually damage the paper. I can feel it feels so much different sliding over the top of the paper. I don't feel like I'm cutting into the paper at all whereas this really feels like it's has the potential to disrupt the paper fibers itself. Um, as far as using the Prismacolor Premier versus Polychromos or anything it shouldn't really make a difference. Um, so the difference is that the Prismacolor is wax based and the Polychromos is oil based and the primary difference between those two is that the, the um, oil makes it a harder colour. So um, it's less crumbly when you sharpen them you're less likely to have bits sort of crumble off. Um, I actually think it's easier to have lots and lots of layers with with an oil based pencil rather than a, a wax based one but they work beautifully together too so um, having said that though there's lots of artists that only use the Prismacolor and they, they they create beautiful art I think it's really just getting used to your tools getting to know how they work together um, and then you know it also depends on your paper too so this is a hot pressed paper so a smooth paper you have to work from light to dark on smooth papers so you when you're working you've got to think about what's the color that's the lightest that you can see coming through the the feathers or the um, fur and start with that layer and I will pretty much always start with a warm gray or a cold gray one because it's closest to white and although they're really not white but um, as you've seen, but um, it allows me to come back to something much lighter um, if I have dark colors go over the top. So you've got to think in that working from dark to light, um, from sorry, from light to dark, so the exact opposite. If you use something like pastel paper, then you can do the opposite. You can work from dark to light. Um, with the slice tool, no, for this one, there's all different ones okay so this one oh, doesn't even tell me what actual sort they are but this one I haven't got a hold down I it just clicks up however I did notice that it tends to move a little bit in there so I've shoved a little piece of paper I don't know if you can see that down the side just to stop that movement um, I also have this one which I have started to use on these tiny miniatures that I'm doing but it's like the smallest I don't know if you can see there the smallest of little blades on there um, but I did see that there is one that's um, more shaped like like that sort of blade so it has like a longer tip on it and I don't know if that makes a difference as well but the one that I've got here this one no I've just pushed it up and it stays up I do kind of remember hearing somebody talking about that too though so I'm wondering if there is a newer and an older model perhaps um, but uh, maybe try taping it up or something if if it's not staying up because if it's more like a box cutter type one perhaps it won't stay up but you could try taping it around to see if it stays up or take it back and get a different one I've got hot press arches it's quite yellow in colour so yeah the, there, there are different they're all slightly different basically aren't they so this is this Fabriano I'm just trying to find if I've got a white piece of paper um, it's called traditional white and it is quite yellowy so this is a piece of like copy paper and it looks really blue next to it um, you can get a bright white in there um, in the Fabriano as well but I tend to like I'm just wondering whether this one yeah okay so this is a um, this is Cancer Moulin de Roy and it's a hot press watercolor paper too as well and you can see there's difference in color between that two this is much whiter um, I think that that really comes down to personal preference I when I first started using watercolor paper um, I was using the Fabriano and the reason I was using the Fabriano is because it's not got any animal products in it which is important to me so um, I started using that and now it's my favorite because it's the one I've worked most with 
Um, I haven't bought any of the bright white. But I quite like the traditional white because it's not bright white and I like how the um, wildlife art sort of sits with it. Um, but I have been watching a other another pencil artist and they use the bright white and it's kind of making me want to have a look at it and see um, what it might be like for a couple of different pieces. You just Everything is such a personal preference and really the best way to decide is to try different things unfortunately our bank balances don't always allow for that so you know if you have other artists in your area that you you know get along with or that you form some sort of little club form something to do which would be nice to do in that respect is to buy a book of something together and we'll try it out but um Mine looks like yours, but the slide is green. Yeah, I'm just wondering if it's a different sort. Oh, good morning to you too, Louise. I hope that everything's um okay on that side of the ditch over there. And yeah, it's that time already, 8.30. And I just listened to the, the auto bin trucks here as well. Um, excellent. Well, we might actually finish up then, hey? Um, so we've done down this part here, added some more depth in here. I think that she's really starting to look more owl-like, much more. Um, she's got a lot more depth to her features. You're certainly welcome to work on, on more if you would like before next week, but we'll set this up again, but for um, Thursday, your Thursday, except for Louise and I, and um, my Friday, and yeah we'll, we'll continue moving on down around this face here but yeah i had a really lovely morning thank you everybody for being here i hope that um i hope it was useful and i hope that you got to do some scribbling or if not that you'll go on to do some scribbling afterwards and that yeah the discussion of tools was really good so let's do that again next week as well if you have any other questions you can either send them through to me uh, beforehand and i'll make sure that i answer them or we can talk about them as we go as well but and I'll have, a, I'll have a look at the Slice website to Katarina and see what um, what different products are available because yeah it sounds like it might be slightly different but the the um, tiny slice tool is what I'm working on using with these little tiny miniatures that I've started working on oh my god they're so small look at that um, I'm giving you a sneak peek here a little fox and a heron and I initially started working on a card but I think that on craft card but I think I'm going to continue on with the watercolor paper and I'm going to shh, don't tell anybody but I'm going to um, sell all these in the next few weeks with a portion of the proceeds 10% going to some wildlife conservation funds so that should be exciting okay thanks so much lovely people um, Reach out to me if you've got any questions. Otherwise, I'm really looking forward to next week as well. And it's I'm so pleased to see her sitting on my wall. She's going to um, be looking at me as I work on other projects. A bit jealously wanting me to work on her as well. But that's fine. Patience. <laughs> it's a virtue. <laughs> so, yeah. I'll see you all next week. Have a really good week. <laughs>